And we are here today at the Digital Packaging Summit with Douglas Gibson, CEO of Infigo. Thank you for joining us today. Hi Linda, it's great to be here. Very excited for the next couple of days to be having some great conversations with yourself and all the wonderful um, customers that are attending. And Doug, let's start with the B2B growth in, um, in web portals and e-commerce. Can you tell us a little bit more about the trends in B2B growth and in the e-commerce space? People are looking for many ways to um, make it easier for their customers to do business with them. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and one of the really obvious ways is giving them that 24-7 interface that they can communicate with those customers. So um, sort of post-COVID, we're seeing a, a movement that didn't exist um, prior, um, which is, well, actually, it's all right to get my products online, get my services online, and a real switch, what I would say, moving from a service proposition to a more productized. So they've got SKUs, they've got standardizations which are easily um, to absorb and put on a, a, a web portal. So we're seeing a, a big change in movement um, with that itself. Yeah, and with that change in movement, you're already on the web. I know that some of um, some label converters are starting to dip their toe a little bit into that consumer market. Can you talk a little bit about that growth to from you know B2B to B2C? Yeah, absolutely. So we were fortunate enough to be at um, a user event the other day and one of the guys came up to me and said, oh, we're working on a, a Magento storefront. Um, what, what, how does this fit? Um, and I said, so what are you doing with the store? It's just a brochure website. And um, the interesting piece is I think that there's still a, a little bit of way to go with the mentality mm -hmm. um, because actually we just need to be allow our customers to go and get that information. We need live pricing. They want instant quotes. The generation that we're, we're seeing um, that are now requesting the, the print, they might not have all of the experience in the past. Mm -hmm. So they just want to say, right, I want 10,000 labels. I want uh, this coating. I want, I want it delivered on Monday. What's my price? They don't want to send an email, make, pick up the phone. They want that information instantly. Um, and it's quite um, interesting that there's still a lot of companies, although they've got beautiful websites, mm -hmm. the ability to get that information is still hidden behind several logins or, or functionality that doesn't quite exist yet. Yeah, and it's, it's very interesting that you bring that up because it is about functionality, it is about reducing friction. Yeah, ab absolutely. Uh, and and the, the big push across B2B uh -huh. businesses is um, making it easier to do business with. So um, you, you mentioned the tradition from B2C, B2B, where is the differentiation? In my um, particular view, there is no difference. Mm -hmm. It is the ability to transact online. Mm -hmm. And I'm either going to allow them to pay via credit card or they're going to have an account in my MIS system um, and they can check out automatically and pay via credit card. That's B2C. The difference with B2B is I'm a registered customer. I know who they are. They might have some preferential pricing. They might have standard products that are already uploaded to the website, but that information is there, it's ready, um, and it's fast and easy for them to order. So in my view, B2B, B2C, it's the same thing. It really is the ability at the end of the transaction to track it, check out via credit card or um, via standard purchase order system. Yeah, and it's no accident that you're here at the Digital Packaging Summit because those digital technologies for printing and converting play really well with... I, I, absolutely, yeah. I think and we saw this um, tradition from lithographic to commercial print many, many years ago, 10 plus years ago. And we're now seeing this trend with digital equipment, um, both for labels and packaging, has become the versatility is there that they can turn orders around in 24 hours, next day, etc. Um, so that's great. There's no point in allowing you to be able to print these orders when it takes you three days to get the order in, and quote um, the, the, the price, send it back to the customer to get that. All of this to and fro in. And what we are um, really looking to help um, these label converters, packaging converters, is have that interface reduce 80% of that workflow of price back and forth. Yes, I want a thousand, I want ten thousand. My budget's only five thousand dollars, so I haven't got enough to order twenty-five thousand labels. Remove that friction and put that onto the website, so that those CSRs that are working, those account managers are working on high-value, high-profit areas rather than what I would class as that transactional easy to win business. Yeah, and having that transactional, easy to win business kind of 
vampire out, be sucked out of your ROI and your profits? Uh, 100%. There's no point. Um, there was a study many years ago, one of the manufacturers, and I'm probably going 15 years, and it was 20 to 30 bucks to have that one conversation. Never mind putting it four to five ways. So you're looking at, uh, for an order that might be a thousand bucks, a hundred bucks just in being able to get an estimate out. That's just crazy. In many ways, if we're running at five, 10% margin, that's gonna be eroded straight away. So we have to be able to handle more orders, mm -hmm. consume more orders, make it easy for those orders to travel through the business. And then once that information is passed, we need to then push it directly into the business. Because a lot of what we see, once these guys get up and running, they get all excited, they've got a BDC system, B2B, they've got the portals, and now the orders then stop at the next juncture. Um, which is another big thing that we <coughs> were seeing, certainly from Label Expo. It was, I was blown away by customers. The first thing, who do you integrate with? And that was the big thing. So we're seeing that sort of movement as well, where people don't want disparate systems, they want systems that are super connected. That literally, we want to know, has it gone into the workflow? Have we fired the jobs over to hybrid? Have we got the MIS information from CERB? Do we have the accounting information from Zero? All of this information is really important to follow that job around the factory. So that's one of the big things that Figo is working on, is actually who are we partnered with, who are our alliances with, um, and what does that then add value, does that then add directly back to the customer? Mm -hmm. And this plays right into that conversation that we're having about automation. Yeah, yeah, I think Marcus Wall was talking about it yesterday. He said, look, you guys have got to be, capital equipment um, is highly expensive and can be um, time consuming to get some ROI, but the guys that have got the equipment, how can they get more value out of that equipment? Well, ultimately, it's getting more jobs into the factory in an easier way. And I describe Infigo as a couple of things. Number one, it allows you to get more orders into your factory. That, that's that's its one of its first purpose. The second purpose is it allows you to get more orders into the factory, but in a more profitable fashion. And what I mean by that is, as soon as an order comes in, I know exactly what the price is. I've got my quote from my MIS system. I know exactly what that job is costing me. I know that it needs to be turned around in a certain amount of days, and I know what press it's going to go on. So I then take that order, I take that XML, that information, I push it directly to my workflow system, hybrid, etc. I push that order in, so I've now got all my job information, I've now got my um, job itself, and they're now fired directly over the press. Completely hands off, completely lights out, and then if they're using some batching tools and things like that, those jobs can come in together mm -hmm. and actually be printed in one large run as well. So easy for the jobs to come in and then it pushes around to the factory and moves around in a very efficient way. Yeah, and you know, now we've got the label converters, they're excited. They're excited about they're excited about B2B business, growing their B2B business, starting or growing or elevating their B2C mm. business. They're thinking about automation, they're loving what you're saying about, you know, integrating all these symptom systems and if they're all excited about this, the question is, is it going to be complicated to get started? Well, <clears throat> yes and no. The reality is, is how complicated do you want to build it into the business? Um, and, and I take another part from the opening speech yesterday. Labor is getting difficult to find. And not just labor, labor with the right skills. So yes, some parts of this are complicated too. This is not we'll plug on tomorrow and it'll be uh, and it'll be ready I'm sorry plug in today and it'll be ready tomorrow but the reality is and this is where it comes back to manufacturers that are writing this software is we need to write um, the technology so it's easy to manage mm -hmm. and the complexity that's hand handled behind the scenes and the way we do that is writing very open interfaces very open APIs so that if you want to connect to fire systems you can do that without a developer or hiring in very expensive cost so yes, it, there is some complexity, which is why people, um, why people want to use um, solutions. I was having two or three conversations last night and the guys were saying, Doug, I've gone down this rabbit hole. I've spent hundreds of thousands on this technology that, that, that now sits in the side of the, the factory because the developer left. Mm -hmm. And that's the challenge. Do I build it? Do I develop it? So there is that complexity, but we're here to, um, enhance that and make that a lot simpler for the end user and one of our challenges that um, we, we said like web to pin web to pack in 30 minutes mm -hmm. 
we should be driving that ability to make this easier. And that's the challenges I set down to my CTO and my technical team is, this has got to be easy. As complex as it is, we've got to make the most complex things as easy to manage. So um, there is complexity there, but we have to continue to refine that and, and build easier tools that we can integrate and, and get it um, out to the, the, the world much quicker. Yes, and it is um, obviously easy for anyone who is attending the Digital Packaging Summit to start a conversation with you um, while we're here, but some of the people who will be watching this video will not, well, let's face it, most of the people will have not had a chance to be at Digital Packaging Summit. Could you um, just kind of share the first steps in starting a conversation with you Absolutely. Well, the first thing is make sure you're at the Digital Packing Show next year because it is a fantastic show and we love, this is our third, maybe fourth year of attending um, and we always have great feedback and amazing conversation. So first thing is these guys should be here. <laughs> um, the second thing is go into a website, request a demo, request a consultation. What we try to do um, is we have an open conversation first. We're not diving into a heavy sales pitch. You can book a, a, a consultation, we'll have a conversation, we'll understand what systems you have, and then we'll follow that up with a more technical, um, very um, customer-led demo from that perspective. So jump on the website um, and you're able to um, see that information very quickly. Well, and appreciate you taking the time to meet with us today and always appreciate that you are such a vital part of the Digital Packaging Summit. Yeah, pleasure, Linda. We're really excited. Looking forward to those conversations. Um, looking forward to um, meeting some great people.